Hi everyone, my name is Tyler and I'm here to help you get into your new 40k army. 40k as a hobby can be very expensive to get into, but my goal with this series is to help you get a full army going without having to break the bank. Before we dive into the list, let's talk about some basic rules that we're going to be using for the list building process here. Our first goal is going to be to keep it affordable and utilize box deals. For everything that we're going to be looking at today, we're going to be looking at it from an MSRP value from Games Workshop themselves. Now, I don't recommend buying everything MSRP from Games Workshop. Often, local hobby stores, eBay, Amazon, things of that nature will have much better deals for the kits that I'm about to show you. Our second goal is that we're going to be making the list in steps, starting at 500 points and working our way up to 1,000 points, 1,500 points, and 2,000 points. Our third rule is we're going to be avoiding Forge World and Finecast. Many Forge World models are often very pricey for the points that they provide you on the table, and the resin use can be hard to work with, especially for beginners. As far as Finecast goes, I just don't think that they're quite as high quality as the plastic models that you can get otherwise. Our fourth goal is to aim to make lists with decent competitive viability. We're going to be trying to make lists that can do well at casual tournaments, in your games with friends, or maybe even get you some wins at major tournaments. Our fifth and final rule is the most important one. Just because I don't mention a model in my list, it doesn't mean that it isn't good. The most important thing that you can do is collect models that you think are cool. There's an entire side of the hobby that has nothing to do with playing, and if you don't like the models you're painting and building, you're not going to get the most out of this hobby. Today we're going to be talking about the first army that we've covered that has a full codex, the Tyranid Swarm. The Tyranids are the original version of the Zerg race. They are a carnivorous, insect-like alien race bent on nothing more than the consumption of life in the galaxy. As they consume life and matter, they increase their own numbers as they turn entire planets into biomass to be turned into any kind of Tyranid needed, whether it's big bugs, small bugs, or anything in between bugs. If you think of the Space Marines as the protagonists of 40k, then Tyranids are the primary antagonist of the narrative of 10th edition right now. They are the faction that is directly competing against the Space Marines. The Tyranids, like a lot of other insectoid alien races that you'll see in media, are controlled by a hive mind that allows for huge varieties of monstrous bugs to work together with incredible intelligence that you would not expect from a group of insects. And they're also adaptable to the point that you cannot stop them with any kind of plague or virus bomb or anything like that. You might be able to slow them down. They will never be stopped. They are very much like Thanos. They are inevitable. So, why would you want to collect the Tyranids? Whether you want to go full Godzilla bug army, fill it with literally hundreds of models, or go anywhere in between, Nids do it all and they do it well. They move fast, they tank, they shoot, they fight, and when it was part of the game, they were great in the psychic phase. They are also an incredible army at playing tactical missions. I would argue the single best army in the game at playing tactical missions. They have such flexibility in their lists, so many different fast units, so many different cheap units, and they also have biovores. And biovores are broken for tactical missions. They're also one of the best new player armies because they let you learn so many different styles of gameplay. You can really pick any kind of style of army with Tyranids and have some level of success with it. It's not like Tau where you will never learn how to use the melee phase. It's not like Orcs where the shooting phase might as well not exist. And you're going to be able to just have so much variety in a game-to-game -game basis that you will eventually learn everything you need to learn just by playing this army. They're also currently one of the two main story factions given that they are kind of the poster child of 10th edition. This means that they have a lot of immense discount boxes and are flooding secondhand markets like eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and anything like that for huge markdowns. Normally they are a very expensive army, but this is saving a ton of money for people who are interested in Tyranids. And finally, the army just looks so goddamn cool. They are so thematic, 
flavorful. All the bugs have such cool designs. There is almost nothing bad with their models, except for a couple of models that are starting to show their age a little bit. So why would you ever want to avoid collecting Tyranids if they have all those amazing things going for them? Well, for starters, most of the units that you're going to be picking up on Tyranids if you're buying the boxes on their own are less than two points per dollar, even with a lot of the bigger bugs. So the cost for an army, if you're just trying to put it together piecemeal, is very high. You really do need to go and get all of the deal boxes that you can if you want this army to really be affordable in any way. The combat patrol is also just not worth your money at all. We're going to cover more on that later, but just do not ever buy a Tyranids Combat Patrol unless there is literally nothing else that you can find anywhere that will get you a deal. There are quite a few ways that you can cost efficiently collect Tyranids, but it results in a lot of monopose, push fit models. These can be great for beginners, but they're not amazing for customization. And if you're playing against someone who is a real stickler for playing what you see is what you get, it's going to be a little bit annoying, but as long as you're playing with people who are a little bit friendlier than that and are more willing to accept that not everybody can have multiple copies of every model that have all the different loadouts, you're going to be fine. Additionally, your personal lore just sucks. By nature of being a non-humanoid army with no actual personality, your entire lore is from the perspective of people you are invading. The lore surrounding the Tyranids is great and it's awesome and it's so cool but you can't expect any good stories with nids where they are the protagonist you will not see anything good from their point of view and the last thing is a good nid paint job just takes a lot of time you're going to be painting a lot of bugs especially if you like the horde style and trying to get all of those nice little carapace details on all of them is a huge huge pain in the ass so let's take a quick minute and let's talk about some of these starter deals that I've been mentioning and why you would want these as your introduction for NIDs or maybe even just expanding your collection of NIDs. To start off, let's look at the basic Warhammer 40k starter set for 10th edition. If you took the starter set for 10th edition, which is $110 in the US Games Workshop market, and you added on a box of Barbagons, it runs you $155. The Combat Patrol for Tyranids is $160, so you're spending $5 more to get the Combat Patrol, which has the exact same thing. Except, if you buy the starter set, you also get a bunch of extra marine models on the side, just because. You are actually spending more money to get less stuff if you go and buy the Combat Patrol instead of just buying the starter set again. If we go and we look at the ultimate starter set, it's a little bit less of a good value for just collecting Tyranids. But if you can split this with a marine player and you also want terrain, it's actually not too bad. It's not that far off. If you can get it to about that $110 price after splitting it that you would have paid for the starter set, absolutely pick this one up. But if you're paying full price for it, eh, not really. The biggest one is the Leviathan box. Now, it's not in print at Games Workshop anymore, so I'm not going to be using it for any of my lists, but it is an amazing box. Inside of it are $545 worth of Tyranid models. You can get the Tyranid half for even close to $200, and consider that good value. If you can get a full box and go 50-50 with the Marine player, it's insane. Now, when the box came out, it ran about $250, so keep an eye out in case anyone looks like they're trying to super hard scalp anything out of it, and be aware that if you're seeing the Tyranid half for like $200, you're paying for most of the Leviathan box and still not necessarily getting that much out of it in comparison to what they got for the extra $50 or so. But even at $200 for what's in here, you're still getting a lot of savings. The very last one that's actually kind of hilarious is the Space Marine board game from Target. Inside of here are 20 Termagant models that are all monopose, much like the starter set is going to have. Except it runs you $40 
for the 20 models. Normally, 20 Termagants, if you were to buy them from Games Workshop, would run you $90. So if you're okay with Monopose, which we are going to be for this video, you can save $50 whenever you go and you buy Termagants. That means that you could get 40 Termagants for the price of 20. Now, the Tyranid army rule is broken down into two parts. The first part is Synapse, and the second part is Shadow in the Warp. Now most Tyranid models don't actually have that great of a leadership test, so they would battle shock pretty easily. Thankfully, if you have units in your army that have the synapse rule, instead of rolling 2d6 for your battle shock, you get to roll 3d6. This takes them from being an army that fails battle shocks regularly to an army that may, is going to struggle to fail battle shocks, as 3d6 on average is going to be a 10 or an 11. Shadow and the Warp also plays into Tyranid's love of battle shocking. If you have a Tyranid army, then once per game, you can just make the entire enemy army have to take a battle shock. You can use this on your turn to make it so that they can't use defensive stratagems. You can use it on their turn to make them lose objectives and lose out on offensive stratagems. It's a very flexible army rule in that sense. And it is very, very potent against almost every army. So because this is a codex army, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be focusing on three different attachments. For each of those attachments, we're going to be breaking them down into their own attachment rules in their section of the list. The first one that we're going to be looking at today is the Unending Swarm. Now the detachment rule for the Unending Swarm is Insurmountable Odds. If you were running a unit that has the endless multitude keyword and a couple of models in that unit die from being shot at, then you can take a surge move and move 1d6 towards the closest unit. This can also get you into engagement range, which means that you can stop just shy of a shooting army, get shot at, and then still get in on them. It makes it very easy for you to move a lot of different units up the battlefield very quickly and also tie things up ahead of time. And because you are running a horde army with this style of list, being able to just be everywhere is incredibly good. Now at 500 points for the Unending Swarm style of list, we're gonna be picking up the starter set and we're gonna be picking up one box of gargoyles. You're not gonna to be too worried about the Marines that you get on the side, just kind of put them off, start a Space Marine collection, give them away, Put, use them as basing material, who cares? You just care about the nids inside. Now, one thing that I want to note now before we get too much further into the video is if you are playing with someone who doesn't mind you having the wrong weapons on your Termagant loadout, what you're going to want to do is run their flesh bores as spine fists. Spine fists are simply the best choice in basically every situation. There are certain combos you can use where the devourer is a little bit better, but if you can, just run Spine Fists, make it easy for yourself. Now one thing that can be an upside and a downside depending on how you want to look at it is the Tyranids don't usually have a lot of good weapon options. It's usually just the one set of weapons that they can run. So with most of these units, you're just not going to necessarily see me mention their weapons because you don't really have a second choice. But for the Wing Tyranid Prime, we are going to be giving him the Adrenalized Onslaught Enhancement. Adrenalized Onslaught is going to make it so that every time that the Tyranid Prime's unit, which is going to be the Gargoyles, has to do a pile-in or consolidate, it gets to go an additional 3 inches, going from a 3-inch pile-in and consolidate to a 6-inch pile-in and consolidate. This means that once this unit gets into combat, it is almost impossible to get out of combat. You're going to really tie things up on your opponent and you're going to make their life hell. Now the Gargoyles are just going to be your good, generic, fast-moving infantry. Your Termagants are going to be your core focus of this style of list. Von Ryan's Leapers are good infiltrating units. Swarm Rippers are going to be able to do all of your secondary missions. And Psychophage is a good defensive boost to your Termagants. It's going to be giving them that 6-up feel-no-pain as long as it's close. And it's very easy to have them be close because you only need to have one model within range to give it to the entire unit. 
Now, as we look at 1000 points, what we're gonna do is skip the combat patrol again. We're gonna go straight for the starter set. We're gonna get a second box of gargoyles to really make that unit much thicker. We're gonna grab a Haraspex box, which is gonna be turned into an Exocrine, and we're gonna go to Target and buy a Space Marine board game. Now this is going to give us 20 gargoyles, it's going to give us 3 units of 20 termagants, all with the same weapon, again if you can run spine fists, do that. It's going to give us 2 separate units of Von Ryan's Leapers, it's going to give us an Exocrine, and we don't care about the second Psychophage, we don't care about the second Wing Tyranid Prime, we only need the one copy of each. They're just kind of there as nice units for the future, in case you decide that you do want to run them for whatever reason. Now, as we go up to 1500 points, we're going to be picking up a third starter set, which is very funny to me, but, you know, we do what we do. Then we're going to go pick up a second Haru Specs box, and we're going to be rounding it out with one Tyran Effects box, which is going to be turned into a Turvagon. Now, at this point in the list, we're going to be dropping the Winged Tyranid Prime entirely, so you're going to have three models of those in the back, but, again, that's fine. As long as we're getting Termagant value out of it and we're getting Von Ryan's Leaper value out of it, we're still saving money, even if we're not using everything in the box. It's going to wind up looking like two Exocrines, three units of Von Ryan's Leapers, four units of 20 Termagants, one unit of 20 Gargoyles, and the Turvagon is going to be equipped with massive Scything Talons and Naturalized Camouflage. Naturalized Camouflage is going to take three units that have the Endless Multitude keyword that are within nine inches of the Turvagon, who has a big base, so it's not too hard to be within nine inches of him with at least one model. And it's gonna give them the benefit of cover for the first round. This means that you can just jam your units into the middle of the board, don't have to worry about cover, and you know they are still going to at least get that plus one to their save. Now it's only gonna last for that first round, but it's still a huge buff. Now, on top of that, in your command phase with the Turvagon, you are going to be able to select one friendly Termagant unit within six inches. Again, not too hard. And you get to return D3 plus three destroyed models to that unit. This means that even if your Tyranid Termagants are starting to get picked off a little bit, you're going to be able to bring them back over and over and over again. On top of that, they're going to have a 6-up Feel No Pain from the Psychophage, so they're going to be even harder to kill on top of the cover, on top of getting brought back. Then the Turbagon is also going to be able to give all of those Turbagon units lethal hits, which means they're even more lethal than normal, and you're starting to see why Turbagons are such a big part of this list. Now, at 2,000 points, all we have to do is pick up one Hive Tyrant box, and then we're going to go back to Target, and we're going to buy two more Space Marine board game boxes. This is going to wind up giving us one Turvagon with the massive Scything Talons, who's still going to have a naturalized camouflage. We're going to get one Winged Hive Tyrant with Monstrous Bone Sword and Lash Whip. We're going to have one 20-man Gargoyle unit who's going to be moving up the board super quick. We're going to have six units of 20 Termagants for 120 Termagants in total on the board, all with their Spine Fists, if it's okay. Then we're going to have three units of four deployed Von Ryan Sleepers. We have three Ripper Swarms in the back ready to do actions and come in from reserves. We've got the two Exocrines for damage, and we've got the Psychophage to make this as hard to kill as possible. Now, you can go even harder with the amount of spam on this list as soon as you start picking up some Hormagons, you pick up some extra Gargoyles. But this is about as cheap as you're going to be able to get into this style of list. Now, the part about this that is truly beautiful to me is if you do this style, you are going to wind up with about 2,400 points of Tyranids, meaning that you will have options with what you want to bring. You could bring more Psychophages, you could bring those winged Tyranid Primes, and you can take things out as you see fit. But on the side, as you've been buying this, you've also just accidentally gotten 1,100 points of Space Marines. Between three Terminator Captains, 15 Terminators, and 15 Infernus Marines, you're already over halfway towards a Terminator-focused Space Marine army. And this costs you basically nothing to get in addition to all the other stuff that you were getting. You were already going to buy Termagants. Two boxes of Termagants is $90. 
For $20, you got Von Ryan's Leapers, Wing Tyranid Prime, Psychophage, Terminator Captain, Terminators, and Infernus Marines. That's a great deal, and part of why that combat patrol is as bad as I said it is. The next attachment we're going to be looking at is the Generic Invasion Fleet Detachment. This one is a good all-rounder. You can use it for any Tyranid army, and you will have pretty good success with it. The hyper adaptations take place in the first battle round as the game is starting. You get to pick between one of three different good abilities, either the swarming instincts, hyper aggression, or hive predators. If your opponent is running a bunch of infantry or swarm units, you take swarming instincts and you get extra hits whenever you roll a six on the hit dice. If they take a lot of monsters or vehicles, well, give your entire army lethal hits so that they are more likely to get their wounds through. And if your opponent is an army that relies super heavily on having tons of different characters, then you can make it so that all of your units will have the precision keyword and be able to pick those units out of the pack. Now, in my opinion, Hive Predator is the weakest of the three choices and should basically almost never be taken. But Hyper Aggression and Swarming Instincts are both very, very potent boosts to your damage and your ability to clear through the correct type of target that you need. Now, you could take the generic Tyranids army detachment rule and take it for whatever you want. You can make it an unending swarm style. You could make it a vanguard style. You could make it something in between. We've got a good mix. But because we've got all those small bugs, I want to make this one all about the big bugs. And because Crusher Stampede as a detachment rule just isn't good, this is the better version of Crusher Stampede for the army. Now to get to that big bug style, we're going to be starting off in a very similar way as the Unending Swarm. We're going to be picking up a starter set, but we're also going to be picking up a Death Leaper. Now this time around, the Wing Tyranid Prime doesn't have anything to go with, so he's just going to be a solo unit. He's going to have perfectly adapted, he's going to go around, he's going to do some damage. Death Leaper is a very good lone op model who's going to be able to start in the middle of the board and be very, very annoying, potentially get some turn one charges in, potentially just hold objectives, maybe screen things out. Depends on what you need him to do. Everything else here is the same as it was. Again, if your Termagants can have Spine Fists, give them Spine Fists. Now at 1,000 points, what we're going to do is we're going to go pick up two Horror Specs boxes and we're going to be picking up a Hive Tyrant box. It's going to be kind of similar to what we saw with the Exocrines and the Hive Tyrant, but there is one little notable change. Now this time around, the Hive Tyrant isn't going to be a Flying Hive Tyrant. It's going to be a Hive Tyrant on foot. It is going to be equipped with a Monstrous Bone Sword and Lash Whip, Monstrous Scything Talons, and it's going to be getting the Perfectly Adapted Enhancement. The Winged Tyranid Prime is going to have to lose Perfectly Adapted this time around, but that's okay. He's just kind of a placeholder unit anyways. The two Exocrines are going to do what they do, and they're going to provide us covering fire from the back line and be a good anti-mid-range, kind of anti-tank killing firepower. Now, moving up to 1,500 points, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be picking up a Horrors of the Hive box from Games Workshop. We're also going to be picking up one box of Carnifex Brood. Now, because we are using this Horrors of the Hive... I would seriously suggest that you look into trying to pick up a Leviathan box set for the Tyranid half if you can for this style of list. It is going to save you quite a bit of money in the long run if you can do that. With the boxes that we just bought, we're going to be making Old One-Eye plus one regular Carnifex that has a Heavy Venom Cannon, Carefex Scything Talons, Bioplasma, and Spine Bank. We're also going to be taking it, the Neuro Tyrant. We're going to be taking the Screamer Killer. And that's going to be kind of the big thing here is just adding in these extra little characters. Now, the Screamer Killer was not in a very good place previously. But after the Balanced Data Slate, it got some points reductions. And I think it's actually not too bad now, especially if you want to be able to force some Battle Shocks on your opponent so that someone like, say, the Death Leaper can go and force some of his Battle Shock shenanigans. Now, to round it out at 2,000 points, what we're going to do is we're going to be picking up one Biovore and we're going to be picking up two Toxicrine boxes. If we wanted to be very smart about our purchases, the correct final box would be something like a box of gargoyles. However, 
I wanted to make this a big bug list and I can't do that without including the biggest bug. So we're gonna be picking up one Norn Emissary. Now the Toxocranes are gonna to be turned into Maliceptors and the Norn Emissary is just gonna be built as a Norn Emissary. Now what's really cool about the Norn Emissary and part of the reason why I felt like I had to include him is just how durable this thing can get. It has a two up save, four up invuln, and with its singular purpose, you can set it on the center objective in the middle of the board, give it OC 15, a five up feel no pain with its 16 wounds and sit there and laugh as your opponent tries to blow this thing off the table. It is going to take an entire army's concentration and focus just to kill this one thing which means that suddenly they are now also getting swarmed by the Exocrines, by the Maliceptors, by the Termagants, by the Hive Tyrant, by the Death Leapers, by Old One-Eye. This list just shoves into your opponent. The Termagants are there to kind of just be objective holders, and the Bio War is going to handle all of your secondary gameplay for you, so you can really just focus on beating your opponent down. Now the final detachment that I have for you today is the Vanguard Onslaught with their detachment rule Questing Tendrils. This gives you an army-wide fallback and charge. This is so, so good for making sure that your units don't get stuck up in combat with just random trash, and you're always going to be able to kind of get that fight first ability from making the charge in your turn. On the back half of it, if your unit is a Vanguard Invader, then they can also advance and charge. Suddenly, your entire army is incredibly quick. They are moving up the board in lightning fast speed, and your opponent is not going to be able to stop you from reaching them and tearing them to shreds. They also very technically have a second rule that lets the Death Leaper become your Warlord, but whatever, who cares. Now, the Vanguard Onslaught is in my opinion, the most specialized of the three lists that I'm going to show you today, and as such, it has the hardest time getting discount boxes going and really saving a lot of money. It does thankfully have some pretty cost-efficient units between Neurolictors and Gene Stealers, but this is going to be the most expensive one that you're going to see today and would be my least recommended choice. It does also do quite a bit to limit you to kind of one play style of forward deploy with a bunch of units and run at your opponent as fast as you can, which is great if that's what you like. And if that's all you want, cool, more power to you, go for it. But I think that it doesn't give you much direction for expanding your army from this point. Since none of the boxes give enough value for us to justify picking up the value deals, what we're going to be doing for the Vanguard Onslaught is just buying everything piecemeal. That means that we're going to be picking up one Hive Tyrant, we're going to be picking up two boxes of Gene Stealers, and we're going to be picking up one Lictor for the 500 point list. The Winged Hive Tyrant is going to have a Monstrous Bone Sword and Lash Whip and no enhancements because we can't fit any. The Gene Stealers are going to be one 10 man unit and one 5 man unit, and then we're just going to have one Lictor. You could run this as three five-man units if you really wanted to. It would give you a couple more units. It would give you less overall just power in one single activation. It doesn't really matter that much at 500 points. The Winged Hive Tyrant is going to do most of the heavy lifting anyways. Now, at 1,000 points, what we're going to be doing is just picking up that third box of Gene Stealers. These really are the core of a Vanguard Onslaught army. They are the probably the most important unit in my opinion, and thankfully we only need three boxes of them, which is great. We're also going to pick up two boxes of Horus Vex to turn into Exocrines. Again, Exocrines are just good. They're good in every Tyranids list. You will want Exocrines. Again, looking at the list for 1,000 points, we've got the Hive Tyrant with no enhancements, we've got three units of 10 Gene Stealers, we've got one Lictor, and we've got two Exocrines. The Lictor is going to be getting forward deployed, he's going to potentially do some secondary play for you, but right now this list is going to struggle with tactical missions. It really is more of a get up in your opponent's face and just fight them and kind of try to kill them as best you can at these early stages. At 1500 points is when I think this list starts to actually get pretty interesting. 
What we're going to be doing is picking up three boxes of Broodlords, we're going to be picking up one Death Leaper, one box of Von Ryan's Leapers, and we're going to be picking up one box of Gargoyles. Now, all of the Broodlords are going to be going with one unit of Gene Stealers. We're going to be giving one of them the Neuro Mode Enhancement. And the Neuro Mode Enhancement is going to allow you to redeploy any three Vanguard Invader units. Because of changes that were made due to the most recent balance data slate, this got even better as now you can more easily move around your Infiltrator units. So you can actually commit them all the way up the board and then pull them back later if you see that you're going to be going second or if you think you might be in a bad spot. You can also use this to very aggressively deploy your units, at least half of them. Take the other half, put them in a very defensive position, and if you happen to go second, you just pull everything into defensive positions. If you go first, you put everything into offensive positions. This is a make or break enhancement that does so much more work than you might realize because of how important positioning is on turn one. Now at 1500 points, the biggest problem that we were having is we just didn't have a lot of good options for secondary play. We didn't have that at 1000 points or 500 points either. So the first thing that we need to prioritize is picking up a Biovore. That way we can actually compete with those tactical missions that our army is so good at doing. Then we're also going to be picking up two Neurolictors so that we can have even more forward deploying units, even more good options to have on that very front line, and even more good loan offs who can sit on objectives and pull things out of cover for us to charge. We're also going to be picking up one Toxicrine box because Maliceptors are good and this army could use some extra beef that's going to be going onto the front line and doing some pretty heavy melee damage. Then we're going to be rounding it out with one final box of Von Ryan's Leapers. Now pretty much everything about the list itself should be pretty clear. There's really only one loadout for almost all of these units. The one thing I want to note is that the Von Ryan's Leapers can either be ran as one six man if you want to get the most out of stratagem support for them as well as potential other buffs, but you can also run them as two three mans. I chose the one six man because I wanted to be able to get the most out of a redeploy with them and out of the stratagem synergies that they can get, but go with whichever one you want. And those are going to be the three Tyranid lists that I have for you today. If I were to rank them in order of what I would probably go out of my way to buy if I were starting a Tyranid army from scratch, I would probably go with the Unending Swarm, then the Invasion Fleet, and would probably skip over the Vanguard Onslaught. But again, it's just not my style, and I think that there are good ways to get value deals where you can probably go into the Vanguard Onslaught later after you already have a good core of Tyranids. Now, going and looking at the tier list, we can see that we had a couple of lists that went over $900, most notably the Vanguard Onslaught, but as I don't actually recommend that as one of the lists that you start with, instead, I'm going to be placing Tyranids in the $750 to $900 tier. I'm aware that the Invasion Fleet list that I gave you went a little bit above that, but again, I was going with a very different style with lots of big monsters, and even then, if I had gone for something like Gargoyles instead of going for the big, fancy Norn Emissary, I would have been under that $900. So it's going to slot right behind Death Guard. And that's going to be everything that I have for you today. I hope that you all enjoyed this. This was our first look into Codex-related armies. We're going to be doing more of them down the line. If there's anything about the video that you thought could have been handled a little bit better for the upcoming other Codex releases, please feel free to let me know. If you know any other good tricks for saving any money on buying up a Tyranid army, please let us know in the comments so that we can spread that wealth of knowledge around. I will see you all in the next video.